Uh, my name is Terry Allen. I'm the Health Commissioner for the Cuyahoga County Board of Health, serving 885,000 residents in Greater Cleveland. I'm also a member of the Board of the National Association of City and County Health Officials, serving 3,000 health departments across the United States. It's time for America to move upstream to fight chronic diseases that are bankrupting our country. A study released March 20th by the Billiken Institute indicates that seven chronic diseases cost the Ohio economy $56.8 billion every year in health care costs, billion every year in health care costs, and lost worker productivity. The seven chronic diseases include cancer, diabetes, hypertension, stroke, heart disease, pulmonary conditions, and mental illness. Obesity is the most significant among these factors. Upstream prevention strategies to reduce tobacco use promote physical activity and encourage healthy food choices along with improvement in disease management could help Ohio avoid 1.5 million cases of chronic conditions by 2023 and save $40 billion, including $9 billion in treatment costs, according to this same study. A random survey of over 1,700 kindergartners across Cuyahoga County that we conducted in 2006 found that an astounding 35% of these children were overweight or obese. The implications of these data are immense. Greater Cleveland can expect significant increases in type 2 early onset diabetes, increased rates of cardiovascular disease and musculoskeletal problems later in life that increase their risk for hip fractures and chronic joint problems. We just heard about the Matter of Balance program. We're working in communities with seniors to help them uh, reduce hip fractures, the rising cost of uh, long-term care. Often seniors are isolated, working with community centers to try to get them reconnected back to their senior centers. But those programs can be done fairly economically, but the funding for them is very limited across the country right now. A range of statistics describing the scope and magnitude of this problem in Greater Cleveland and Ohio have been included in this testimony. When proper funding is provided to prevent prevention programs, major strides can be made to reduce uh, future costs. Two prime examples can be found in the National Breast Cancer Screening Treatment Program and the tobacco prevention and control efforts in Ohio. Substantial resources geared towards screening, early detection, and disease management have been extremely effective at fighting breast cancer in the United States and right here in Northeast Ohio. Significant tobacco prevention funding for the Cuyahoga County Partnership over the last five years has reduced smoking rates to 18%, lower than the state and national rates. Programs uh, offering uh, cessation services that have been done in conjunction here with folks at the Cleveland Clinic, programs that do peer-to-peer -peer work and education in the school systems, the Smoke-Free Ohio initiative that was launched across Ohio to make bars, restaurants, and bowling alleys smoke-free uh, had about a projected 4% decrease in overall smoking rates alone. In short, there are promising practices and prevention programs proven to work to reduce risk of chronic disease and save lots of money. It's been said that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. If we don't start taking this ounce of prevention seriously, there will be no cure for the burgeoning costs of the health care crisis in America. So in terms of thinking about solutions, I think we need to think about, from the public health and community health side, policies, sustained funding, and a focus on those most at risk. Policies like smoke-free legislation and laws across the country help to reduce smoking rates and also to uh, reduce the burden of cost that would result in future treatment of those diseases. School and food, school policy that relates to food choices, promotion of physical activity that has in many ways disappeared from the curriculum because of pressures around proficiency testing needs to be reintroduced with policies dictated through the uh, Department of Education working closely with Health and Human Services at the national level. Sustained funding through CDC for community programs which are relatively cheap compared to the burden of disease that we face in the community are essential. These funding levels are changed drastically and tend to move based on uh, silos and often are, are not sustained enough to be effective uh, to prove the value of those programs over time. Focusing on high-risk populations is critical. If we think about neighborhoods right here in Cleveland, there are places where children are isolated because of fear of violence, a uh, lack of physical activity, uh, staying in the home, food uh, deserts, as we call them, where the access to fresh fruits and vegetables are not available to them in their immediate vicinity. So promotion of farm markets, working through community centers, 
uh, with families, offering uh, safe places for physical activity, and uh, working with uh, to promote through local uh, food stores ways to increase uh, uh, access to fresh fruits and vegetables are all viable alternatives that, again, can be done cheaply with sustained funding with community groups working with hospitals, working with uh, nonprofits uh, in, in ways that can have substantial impact in the community. So I would ask uh, that uh, at the national level, level that the focus move upstream and uh, buy into the value of an ounce of prevention because it's worth pounds and pounds of cure for society. Thanks.